This is a, a video on how to do the Raman data workup. So first of all, the data are found in the file section under Raman data, and um, I've downloaded all these, or actually, I uploaded all these, so I have these files. So I'm gonna locate them on my hard drive. File, open, through file open here. And I, what I need to do is I need to um, get a normal uh, uh, Windows type dialog to open the files because these um, Office dialogs don't work very well. And what we do is we get this type of dialog and then when you go from here, you go to all files, so it will show you all the files. And I happen to have mine in um, in, in uh, this format and the ones on Canvas are .txt files, so I'm going to download. I'll try group downloading them and see how that works. So the first one here is asking if this is a fixed width file. I'm going to say no. That's delimited with a comma. Yeah. Then I'm going to finish that one. And we're going to go to the finish here. And this one came out a little funky, but let's finish it. Oh no, this is, should be delimited. Comma, finish this guy. So why exactly it's doing this crap, I do not know, but here we go, delimited, next, comma, finish. Okay, let's see how much, oh, is it still spinning? <clears throat> what the heck is going on? So we should have some windows open here. Yeah, oops. Anthony David Toluene. Anthony David ethyl acetate, Anthony David acetone. This one's okay. This one's okay. This one is okay. And this one is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer all these into um, this book two over here. So here I'm going to have all these folders, all these vendors lying around here. Oh goodness, what am I gonna do here? So let me, let me get these guys out of the way. I'll do let's do acetone first. Okay. Let's actually take both these columns from acetone and we'll put them here. Okay, this is stupid, I know. But there's acetone, right? So instead of intensity here, I'm gonna write acetone, right? <clears throat> now I'm going to take this one, I'm going to close it. Now for B, let's use, oh God, Anthony no slashes David. Anthony David unknown. Hmm. Well, let's assume this one's tall. You mean we'll see in a second. I'm going to take the intensity column, copy the intensity column, paste it here. Okay, now I'm going to say, instead of intensity there, I'm going to say tall, oops, tall you mean. And then ethyl acetate. Oops, this one's messed up. Oh well. Thank you. I think it's okay though. I think it's okay. C. Cool B. Say ethyl acetate. And then lastly, we'll do the unknown. 
Okay, there's the unknown. Control C. Control V. There we go. So the intensity, we're going to write unknown. Alrighty. Okay. So now let's go ahead and make a graph of these guys, right? So you'll notice that I trashed the uh, the wave number column from these guys because they're all the same. That generates the same wave number column, the same x column every time. So to make a graph of this, it's actually it's possible that I could do something clever like like this. You know, basically highlight the whole mess. And let's see what this does. We can do data, oops, no, insert, chats, scatter straight lines. Let's see what this guy looks like. Oh, yeah, that works. That works. That works. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So that's actually a good chart to start with here. Now, the choice of colors is absolutely insanely ridiculous, right? And also the cha the choice of wave number limits is a little bit insane as well. Um, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, this peak at low wave numbers is probably some sort of artifact. I think this one's probably toluene. And um, but I'm just going to cut us off here right around um, let's say 100 wave numbers. So we go down to so 125, right? 125, then I'm going to come up here to the 1825. So 125 to 1825. Oops, 1825. There we go. So that looks a little bit less congested. Okay. Uh, let's see now. Um, acetone, toluene, phosphate, unknown. <clears throat> toluene and unknown look pretty similar there, but oh well. So the title we're all right here is all right. Um, uh, Ramon mixture. Okay. All right. So we'll leave that there for the moment. Now let's go ahead and do the analysis, right? Now what we need is we need a linest. And what we're looking for is a coefficient for acetone, toluene, and ethyl acetate that best matches the unknown, right? So we're going to look for a combination acetone, toluene, and ethyl acetate, which, when added up and multiplied through, best matches the unknown spectrum there, right? So let us work on that. So let us take one, two, three columns, one for each coefficient that we want. And do we want an intercept? No, we don't want an intercept. An intercept would add a constant offset to the the mix and that that's not going to be helpful to us right that would be sort of a non-physical thing right so um i don't actually want additional statistics on this right <clears throat> so i'm just going to get the coefficients and the uncertainties here so that's going to be coefficients and uncertainties and uh, they're actually going to come back at us acetone ethyl acetate and toluene so watch carefully equals linest, the y value is going to be the unknown. And I, I do shift control arrow down there from the top, right? I'm going to put a comma. Now the x values are going to be the acetone, toluene, and ethyl acetate columns. Now x in this case does not involve wave numbers. x is what you multiply the coefficients by. Okay, so I highlighted the top row. Now I'm going to go shift control arrow down, right? 
Now I'm going to say false and true because <clears throat> I actually want the uncertainty in the, in the coefficients there. So shift control enter. Now I'll slide on back up there. And there's our coefficients, and let me put their names on them. This is acetone, toluene, and ethyl acetate. Right? And these are actually coefficients are pretty good there. So if we look at this guy, I'll trim the sig figs until we get down to say one sig fig in the uncertainty there. Right? Right? So that's two out of 500. That's very low uncertainty, very low uncertainty, very low uncertainty there. So <clears throat> I'm just going to do a check here. I'm going to add up these guys and see how close they come to the number one, 0.986. That means that the sum of these coefficients is roughly equal to one. And that's just matching this unknown, which supposedly just has those three ingredients. So that's pretty darn good. So there is that. Now let us convert these guys into percentages. Okay, and we'll add a digit to them. Yeah, maybe add two digits. Yeah, there we go. There we go, that works. Add a couple digits to the percentages, right? Excellente, so we'll save this guy. And I will, I'm gonna go to this Persher, Persher, come on, there you go. Okay, this is gonna be the Raman four cup example. Okay. So now what are we going to do with these data? So we have the coefficients, right? Now we need to um, modify the graph a little bit so that it um, shows these various aspects. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make component spectra. All right. The way that I, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in just a second. So I'm going to move this over here a bit. Now, I'll make a skinny column there just to separate these, right? I'm going to say component acetone, component toluene, and component ethyl, oops, acetate, right? And now, after that, I'm going to make the... Um, Model sum. Okay. So component acetone is going to equal that percentage F4 times the acetone value, right? Oops, let me actually, I'm going to delete this stupid column. I'll put it back later. Now, this guy, I'm going to double click there, and that should scatter that guy all the way down to the bottom, right? Okay. Component toluene is going to equal this guy, F4, times this, that guy down there, and component acetyl acetate will equal this guy, F4, times this. So let me check these. Ethyl acetate, toluene, acetone. Great. So now toluene here, I'm going to take it, I'm going to actually take it, I'm going to move this to the, to that guy, and I'm going to move that guy there. I'm going to get grab this guy, ethyl acetate. 
I'll move this guy over here. And now I've got to get Astrotone. And Astrotone, I'm going to move to Component Astrotone here. All right. So I'm going to actually now add it a little column there to sort of separate them. All right. So how does that look, guys? Looking better. Now you can see how when you add them up, these components make the whole. Right? So this is the unknown, right? And that's the sum of the component acetone and the component ethyl acetate. Oops, no, sorry. The component ethyl acetate, right? <clears throat> Okie dokie. So let's just change this a bit. Now let's change the horizontal axis. We're going to highlight just these peaks in here. Well, maybe up to 1525. I don't know. Let's see. Let's go from 5. There we go. Decongest things just a little bit more. And let's make this guy max out at 1,000. Or 10,000, rather. And that's looking good. That's looking good. <clears throat> so let's make one more column here. We'll make two more columns. A model sum. This is going to equal the sum of these guys, right? And then we're going to make one more column called the residuals. And this is going to equal um, the uh, model sum minus the unknown experimental spectrum, right? All right. So, here's this guy, right? This shows good agreement. So, now let's make a copy. Well, let's actually add, we'll add some cosmetic stuff to this, then we'll make a copy. Format, well, let's go design, add element, titles, horizontal, going to be Yeah. in centimeters inverse. I'm going to do a control one here. Oops, where is that? Okay, I'm not going to do control one. I'm going to go home, font, oops. My control one dialog came up in a weird place, I think. Don't know where you are, Mr. Control one. Where are you? Where are you? Oops. Oh well. I'll do it here. So one, two, and then we'll do control one. There we go. And then we're gonna superscript the minus one. There we go. That's uh, you know reciprocal. Uh, wavelength in centimeters called wave number. It's proportional to frequency, it's proportional to energy, right? It's not linear with um, a wavelength, but okay, whatever. So now we're going to design this guy, add chart element, axis titles, primary vertical. Uh, and this is going to be intensity. And arbitrary. Okie dokie. All right. So now um, I'm going to take this legend guy, add it to the white space over here. Take this, expand it a little bit vertically. Oops, there we go. And 
that one is pretty close to done. Let's bring it up just a little bit more there. <clears throat> Okay, so that's acceptable. Um, one thing we could do here is we can format this, give it a fill. That's sort of like, yeah, let's give it a nice gray fill there. Oops. All right, so there's that for there's that guy, right? Now let's actually copy this. And let's change things around a bit. Let's not look at the components anymore. Let's look at, for example, component acetone. Let's change that to model sum. Okay. And let's see here. Component toluene. Let's change that guy to residuals. And then, so here, I should say residuals now. Oops. Okay, oh, so I didn't get the component toluene, right? So component toluene, let's kill that guy. All right. Now we've got the model sun, the residuals, and the unknown. All right. So um, what this shows us is how how good the overall fit is, right? And where there's any any uncertainty in the fit, right? So there is a glitch right here, which indicates a slight frequency shift in the um, in this large peak at um, like this eight hundred or this 780 wave number peak. So that's slightly sylvatochromic, we might say. It has a slight shift in wavelength um, as a function of frequency. And there's another um, similar shift over here, right? But basically, this looks really good. We might actually want to put this on its own uh, axis. So we can put this on a secondary axis there just to sort of illustrate the differences and we can make this guy maybe uh, uh, well anyway we'll leave that as it is not going to mess with the color so here is um, the report right ethyl acetate toluene acetone this is the sum right of these guys and um, this is what we want from the from the analysis. We want 45, 3, and 48 percent there. Um, and that is all we need to do here um, for the basic data analysis. There is a part where we want to identify peaks that are unique to uh, one of the spectra. So. Um, there is a peak here at 631. So let's do this. 631, 631, and we can say 0 and 10,000. Let's go ahead and we're going to format design, select data, we're going to add. This is going to be a oh my gosh uh, a unique marker one x values will be here and the y values will be here okay there's that guy 
This peak, unfortunately, is not unique, right? This peak here is, you know, there's a lot of them that don't have toluene, right? But here's, here's um, sort of a wavelength that's more selective for acetone and more selective for ethyl acetate here. So why don't we say um, 1468. Okay, so let's add a marker here. Okay, I went that a little bit too high. How about the 14? <clears throat> there we go. It's a little bit better. All right, so I found some peaks. You guys can probably do better than me on this. So, um... That is all we really need to do with this mixture. So excellent work so far. Then you want to answer the questions in the report and then um, turn in the questions and this spreadsheet together and have this table in the, uh, in the, in the Word document that you make the mini report on. All right, guys. Thanks so much.